Hey guys. Hey guys. <laughs> so we had a meeting with YouTube and they suggested that we should reintroduce ourselves as a channel to you guys, especially for those of you that have just found us. It's been a long time, we've, 14 years this channel is alive. Yeah, we've been <laughs> here for a while. So they suggested that we should kind of introduce ourselves and share with you guys how we became a family of six. So we've done our homework. This is the story of that. For those of you that are new and for those that aren't, that would like to just come along for the journey once again in a condensed form. Enjoy the video. Bye. So I've been making YouTube videos for 14 years. Ain't that crazy? And although most of the regular viewers of this channel know me and my family, I thought it was time we reintroduced ourselves. So this is episode one of our reintroduction series. When I was in my mid twenties, myself and my girlfriend were making YouTube videos as a full-time job. We had this idea that we were gonna travel the world, see everything, go on incredible adventures. Should we show them view or we never show them view ever? As our videos started to get more attention, we applied to a YouTube Next Up program, which was offering grants to creators who wanted to travel. A lot of our viewers say that the reason why they like our videos is because we live in Europe. Well, we'd like to take that to the next level and show you guys what life is like all over Europe. Please give us the opportunity to meet for a croissant in Paris. We had nothing tying us down. This was our time to see the world. But then right before that adventure was about to begin, something happened that changed the trajectory of our entire lives. It's not hard to make choices with huge amount of risks when you're young, broke and in love. And that was that. All our plans and ideas for the future had completely changed. Everything that we thought the first few years of our marriage was gonna be like had just been pushed to the side. Oh, good girl. We were now responsible for a human being. And I could barely even look after myself. But yeah, here I was, a parent to a baby, and she was amazing. Get your little fort, huh? No matter what anyone tells you, no matter how much advice you're given, how many books you read, how many courses you go on, there is no copy and paste for parenting. It's so different for everyone. What people do tend to echo is this idea that your relationship with your partner will suffer after you decide to have a baby together. And you will lose part of your identity and spend your time mourning your past pre-parenting life. A couple of days ago, I was out on a bike and I left the bike in the car. I never checked to see where all the parts here. The second part of that statement about losing yourself is true, but it's nothing to do with becoming a parent. It's about growing up, evolving, maturing, becoming comfortable with who you are and realizing that you might need a little bit of help in life and that's okay. But we're not here to talk about that today. We're specifically talking about parenting. For me, it was the opposite. A new and exciting identity was forming inside of me. I was no longer a me person. I became an us person. There was no more my life. It was all our life. And honestly, it made me a much better person. So if you're about to have a baby and you're worried about losing yourself or your partner, that's not always the case. A huge advantage to myself and Anna's positive relationship is that our values are aligned. Hi. So when it comes to the decisions of how we parent, there is no friction. We are friends before we are lovers and our friendship will always endure. Now I'm not sugarcoating it. Marriage is hard work and it's a constant compromising evolution of people. But we'll save that for another video. I'm sure in some reality myself and Anna became travel influencers, remained childless and got to travel all over the world. And I'm sure our social media was clean and crisp curated images, which in fairness does sound pretty good. But then I wouldn't have learned what being a parent taught me about me. I wouldn't be the person I am today. So what do you do when you're given something that makes your life 10 times better? Oh my God, I just had like an emotional breakdown. <laughs> This is the last bin. I can't believe she's so big. I need to have another baby. And we did. Oh my God. What is going on? When I became a parent for the first time, not much in my life had changed. There was a little bit more responsibility. I had to consider her needs. Even. Yeah. But then when I stood there holding my second child, something changed in me. Are you guys ready to officially meet the newest member? Huh? Newest member of the Coney Jolies. I'm gonna assume by now most of you watching this know that Edie was born a boy. 
with a different name. But in 2020, she became a girl named Edie. Hello there, Junior. All my ideas and dreams of traveling the world. (laughs) Now all I wanted to do was be the best parent that I could. I wanted to spend all my time in raising my child. I started to think about the future. I started to become insecure financially. I started to wonder, would I be able to support my children? So I convinced my wife to come with me on an adventure. All the talking about it, all the planning around it has actually arrived. I didn't know if this was going to be a good idea or a bad idea, but I knew I had to do something. I knew I wanted a better life for my children. I knew this might be my last chance to go on an adventure. My life had changed. I was responsible for these children. It made it a lot more scary. Oh my god, I'm freaking out right now. But I still got on that boat. Even though becoming a parent makes you a lot less risk overt, having children gives you the drive to want to succeed for them. This is the start of an exciting adventure, friends. We're home! Look at the So now, we're living in England. And you know what? It turned out to be okay. Good morning, friends! We're all in the bed and the little one said, roll over. Be it luck, be it hard work, whatever it may be, things worked out for us. I have been going to Everything rolled onto the floor. I didn't have get my drink. Our business grew and our financial worries faded away. I felt confident that I was going to be able to support my children. So what do you do when you get something that makes your life 10 times better? You get more. We have been keeping a secret from you. Hello guys, today I look at my new hairdo and I have a new hairdo here. We managed to get pregnant fairly quickly. And being that this was our third time, we felt like we were experienced parents. So we found an OB, we registered. We went through all the processes of looking forward to the arrival of a new child because we knew what was coming. We had two children. We'd been in this rodeo twice before. But then one morning, it all went wrong. All that hope, all that excitement was over. Um, It's quite serious. Anna had some bleeding this morning. We're going to the early pregnancy unit to get a scan I love you for me being a father to my children means that I will be their protector I will be their cheerleader I will raise them up I will stand in their corner to help them fight any battle I will listen to them I will protect them but this time there was nothing I could do I couldn't help my child what happened to the baby? Yeah. I was was too small was it too small? yeah but isn't it okay? Because where's the baby now? In Nono's house. In, in Nono's clouds. house? In the clouds? Yes. Yeah. But I think we'll have another baby. Yes. A different one. We are told that after the miscarriage that Anna's body will become extremely fertile. And thankfully it did. And we got pregnant shortly after. But the entire time through that pregnancy yeah. I felt so insecure. I expected at every moment that I was going to lose that child. The reassurance you want. (laughs) I was refusing to emotionally connect because I didn't want to be hurt again in the same way. And every time we went for a scan, we were told her head is too small, her body isn't growing. We were classed as a high risk pregnancy. As difficult as it was after losing a baby, I still had two children at home. I still had to put on a brave face. I still had to show them there was hope. And in some ways, they helped yeah, me that's so heal. Cute. How many pictures? We got loads of pictures. I only like your baby. I still was wishing it was a girl so I can play with her. It is a girl, guys. I so I like baby. Baby. Look, look, there's her eye. There's her head. There's her... Different. No, there's her head there. It does look very different. I like her face. What? I like, I like it. She's so cute. All of our pregnancies have been induced. We've never had an impulsive, That's impromptu, exciting delivery. While Anna sat on the bed doing all the work, I sat on a chair in the corner and bided my time till I was to meet my daughter. I've been here nine hours and I'm holding it together. Huh? You look so pretty. And then I heard her cry. Our OB delivered Alessia at 3 o'clock in the morning. He handed her to Anna 
and then it was my turn. And as I stood holding her, I had the same feelings I had for my first child and my second child, and now my third child. I've been waiting it's such a long time for you. Everybody's got a different number of children that reaches their tipping point. For us, it was three. Three was hard. It was so stressful. We had two small children, a three-year-old and a five-year-old, and now we had a newborn baby that wasn't sleeping, that would cry if anyone else were to hold her. But as difficult as it was to have that third child, we thought about her future. Would she have a friend? We observed the bond between our two older children, who were born only months apart. They were so close. They always had each other. So we wanted to give that to her. Yeah, help you right now. Going through the pregnancy with the fourth child was very similar to the first child. In fact, the hardest part of the pregnancy was the fact that we now had reached our threshold of limitation. Three children was breaking us. And we had a fourth on the way? How was this ever going to work? Alessia, if you're watching this, I do love you. But my goodness, you are a handful. We went into the hospital that yeah. evening as organized. We were set up to be induced because Anna's body never seems to push out babies itself. The entire delivery experience was so chilled out and relaxed. We were all making jokes and laughing and then eventually Andrea popped out of Anna. Hey now, buddy. Hey now, buddy. He was so happy, he was so relaxed, and he reminded us of our firstborn <laughs> child. And then he did the unthinkable. We came home and he made everything better. He made our life easier. No. So three was our breaking point. No. But for some reason, four are, was the solution. Right. right before Andrea was born, myself and Anna had closed in on our first house. We were now homeowners. We did it. So now we had four children and a home. And that's the story of how the Sikoni Jolies came to be. I'll go into more detail in future videos about each individual and their stories, but I wanted to give you an overview of our family. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give the video a like as it really helps us out. And let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this and if there's anything specific you'd like me to talk about in our reintroduction series. See you next time.